our 22 News Broadcast Center, this is 22 News in Focus. Good Sunday afternoon. Welcome to 22 News in Focus. I'm Kate Walsh. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Millions of Americans are affected by this cancer, whether they're the patient or their family member is. And the American Cancer Society estimates there would be a quarter of a million new cases of invasive breast cancer this year among American women. Men can also have breast cancer, but it's more rare. So joining us today to discuss this important health concern is Dr. Michelle Helms, a surgeon at Cooley Dickinson Hospital in Northampton. Thank you so much for being here today to talk about this. Thank you for having me. So first we're going to get to the very basics. What is breast cancer at the most basic terminology? So that's a great question. <laughs> we don't often talk about it. So breast cancer is actually when cell turnover goes awry. So we have normal stop gaps in our in our uh, DNA that help us to prevent things from getting from growth getting out of control and when that growth does go awry that's when we form tumors. So do people have cancer cells in their body that might not turn into a tumor or a full cancer and be detected as that? Could we right now have that or is it the minute you have a cancer cell you have a, can a type of cancer? So that's a very complex question. We know that there's a spectrum of breast disease and that most commonly there are changes that occur in those cells as they go down the line to become a full-blown cancer. It's a complex uh, complex process but there are there are precursors to cancer cells. So what types of breast cancer are there? It's not as basic as just that. There are a variety, right? Negatives and, and all of that. So can you kind of go down the line with what kinds of breast cancer maybe you deal with at Coley Dickinson? Sure. So our most common cancers are uh, invasive ductal cancers. The breast tissue is made up of lobules, which are the milk glands, and ducts, which, which carry the milk to the nipple for breastfeeding purposes. So those lobules and those ductal cells can both undergo mutations as the uh, breast tissue changes. So those are our most common culprits. There are less common causes of breast cancer as well that arise from the structural components that support those glands and ducts. And uh, those can be sarcomas. And then there are other lymphomas and more rare cancers that can present in the breast as well. How do the different forms of breast cancer define what type of treatment is available for patients? Can some not have treatment? Are they that severe, so to speak? So the, the garden variety of breast cancers uh, are treated initially with surgery. Our goal is to remove the involved tissue and test the lymph nodes or removed in, remove involved lymph nodes as well. Breast cancer is a team sport, I say. We work together with medical oncologists, radiation oncologists, and the pathologists who are looking at the cancers under the microscope. Together we individualize the plan for each breast cancer patient based on their tumor characteristics, location of the tumor, and of their preferences and, and their needs. Okay. And is chemotherapy still the most basic type of treatment if removing the tumor um, doesn't work? So the goal of chemotherapy is to provide systemic treatment. We often say that our bodies have surveillance systems and have our immune system in, in, um, in a way to be able to surveil and find cancer cells if they were on the move out of the breast. But being that breast cancer is such an important thing to treat, we don't just often rely on our, our immune system for that job. And that's when chemotherapy comes into play, when we want to treat the entire body. Okay. Is there a certain cause? You know, we hear of melanoma. Some causes might be spending too much time out in the sun. Is mm -hmm. there some kind of cause of breast cancer that researchers have discovered for this type? So that's a complex question. We don't truly know the cause of breast cancer. What we do know are there are risk factors that can increase a, a man or a woman's risk of developing the disease. Some of those factors can be controlled and others can't. In the controlled category, we know that healthy weight and exercise are a woman's best defense. Mm. Current recommendations are for 150 minutes of moderate intensity exercise per week. And a lot of us aren't able to gather that, <laughs> that much time together, but that's, that's definitely beneficial. Maintaining a healthy weight as well is important. Alcohol intake actually has been uh, correlated with breast cancer as well. 
Women who drink two to five drinks per day have about a one and a half increased risk of developing breast cancer than those who don't consume alcohol. Interesting, what's yeah. the connection there? I think in general, the way we, we always preach to our patients that alcohol is, is carcinogenic and that it's, it can change the, the, and hurt the cell makeup of the membranes it comes in contact with. And so. can breast cancer start as, let's say, a melanoma and spread to the breast, or is it usually detected first in the breast and then spreads elsewhere after that? So there are cancers that can metastasize or can travel to different locations. A breast cancer originates in the breast and then can travel to other places like the lymph nodes, the bone, the brain, the lung. Our goal is to find these cancers in their earliest stage, detect them early before they've left the breast and be able to treat them in that regard. And we're gonna talk about detection in just a moment, but first we're gonna take a break. You're watching 22 News In Focus. Welcome back to 22 News In Focus. This month is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and 22 News is proud to campaign to raise awareness of this serious health issue. So Dr. Michelle Helms is our guest today from Cooley Dickinson Hospital. We were just talking about ways to detect uh, breast cancer and ways that can cause breast cancer. You were talking about some ways to prevent it, so to speak, but there are some other ways where you can't prevent breast right. cancer, right? So what is that? There are certain things that a woman cannot change that might predispose them to breast cancer. Specifically, gene mutations. We've heard a lot in the news recently about the BRCA gene or the BRCA gene and uh, celebrities that have made decisions based on that knowledge. Angelina Jolie, right? Exactly, yeah. exactly. So that can, that's something a woman can't change. Similarly, family history as well, but only about 15% of breast cancers are diagnosed in women who have a significant family history. So a lot of these uh, mutations are arising de novo. Then the, uh, there's other aspects that a woman can't change as well in terms of the amount of exposure to estrogen in terms of when she began having periods and when she goes through menopause. And most importantly, sex. A woman is, is way more at risk than a man is in terms of getting breast cancer. But it is possible for a man to get breast cancer. How often do you see that? at Cooley Dickinson. So it's a relatively rare diagnosis. About 300,000 women will be diagnosed with breast cancer this year, as opposed to 2,600 men. Okay. So it's much less common, uh, but men often present in the same way uh, that women do with a, a lump that they can feel. Uh, we don't routinely do screening mammography in men because of the incidence being so low, but we do recommend that if a man feels an abnormality in his breast, he seek treatment just as a woman would. And that brings us to detection. What is your recommendation for women to detect if they have breast cancer and make sure that nothing's growing, no tumors are growing? So mammography saves lives. And we've we discovered that that is the best screening method that we have to, to find breast cancers. There is some debate at this point mm -hmm. as to when women should begin their mammography. Uh, the American College of Surgeons, the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology, and the American College of Radiologists recommend that women begin at age 40. The American Cancer Society says age 45, and the U.S. Preventative Services Task Force says 50. So I recommend that women discuss their risk of breast cancer with their primary care doctor and determine the best age for them to begin screening mammography and how frequently they should go. What about women who do have a family history of breast cancer? Would they be screened earlier than 40 years old? They, they possibly could be. We recommend that uh, based on the age and uh, characteristics of the family member who was diagnosed, that they discuss with their primary care doc to determine when the best time is for them to begin screening. Is there an average age that you find most people do get breast cancer? Is it between that 40 and 50 year old mark or is it later than that? So it's not actually. About 10 to 15 percent of our breast cancers are diagnosed in women under the age of 50. Mm -hmm. Our thought processes are that the younger women have the most to lose. They have many years ahead of them and early detection is in their favor. But age does correlate with the incidence of breast cancer. So as we age, our, our risk increases. Okay, and Cooley Dickinson has an interesting machine, I guess, new technology, so yes. to speak, 3D mammography. Can you talk about that and why that's important? Sure. Breast, uh, 
normal mammogram, 2D mammogram, has received a lot of scrutiny recently about breast density and detecting breast cancers in women who have dense breasts. 3D mammography has been a, an exciting revelation in that area especially. What the, uh, the 3D arm swings across the woman's breast in a slight arc and takes serial images of the breast. That allows computer reconstruction to create a 3D image, which separates the tissue off of itself versus a 2D image. So that can allow for easier detection of abnormalities. It also decreases the amount of calls that we have to make to women asking them to come back for additional mm -hmm. imaging. Okay, so false positives, right? Exactly. And there has been some controversy we've reported in the past year or so with the 50-year-old mark. Some researchers, I guess, say that there's no greater, um, I guess, rate of lives saved if people are tested before they're 50 years old. So maybe they will be able to detect breast cancer, but it wouldn't lead to their death from it. What, what's that's, the thought on that? That's a complex question, it is. And there's a lot of different thought processes as to, as to when to start mammography. I think the, the most important thing is to know your risk, mm -hmm. know your family history, and be able to determine from there what, at what age you would benefit the most. Okay, and so once someone is diagnosed with breast cancer, what's the next step? What do you do? I mean, that's a really scary thing to be told. It is. And the first thing we say is don't panic. At Cooley, we have a team who's gonna be behind you and guide you through the process. We, um, so from the diagnosis, which is, is often made by biopsy, you then can meet with the surgeon, the oncologist, and the radiation oncologist to determine the best plan of care. We offer both uh, lumpectomies, which is partial removal of just the involved breast tissue, and full removal of the breast or mastectomy in conjunction with medical therapies and radiation therapies as needed for each woman's individual diagnosis. And would you find that mastectomies are common for breast cancer patients, or is it more the rarity? So we're, uh, in, in attempting to diagnose cancers as early as possible, we're finding them smaller. Okay. And smaller allows us to remove less breast tissue. So, uh, but it comes down to a woman's preference. Women decide what they think is best for them. And again, their history and, uh, and their risk factors come into play with that as well and their comfort level. And if a woman does undergo mastectomy, she has a right to reconstruction. And we work with uh, plastic surgeons to help achieve that for a woman to have a good cosmetic appearance right away. Yeah, and, and for family members, is there support for family members out there when, you know, because when you suffer, your whole family suffers. It's not something you can just go home after being diagnosed and live your life normal. And, and plus, if you're sick, you're not feeling well. So what is there for support for families in this area? It's true. We don't often recognize the toll that it can take on family to have a, a breast cancer diagnosis in the family. And so uh, we partner at Cooley with the Cancer Connection in Northampton. Mm. They do an amazing job of providing a safe haven for our patients to just go and, and sometimes vent or find uh, solace in other survivors and to learn as well. And they've provided an amazing service to our community, so we're very thankful for that. We also have social workers through the Mass General Cancer Center that can help provide counseling for patients and family members as well. The Cooley Dickinson VNA and Hospice runs a group for, uh, for children under the age of 18 who are grieving the loss of a family member as well. And, uh, and having groups that are age-based can help uh, find peers that are going through similar, mm -hmm. having similar feelings and going through similar situations to, uh, to find solace as well. All right, we'll be talking more about that after the break. You're watching 22 News in Focus. You're watching 22 News in Focus. Today we're talking about Breast Cancer Awareness Month, which is October, and early detection and treatment options for patients. Dr. Michelle Helms from Cooley Dickinson Hospital in Northampton is our guest today. We've talked about mastectomies, mammograms, but there's ways that you can search for cancer, signs of breast cancer at home as well through the self-exam. Right. How does that, how should you do that? 
So we recommend that a woman uh, palpate her, feel her own breasts once a month. A lot of women choose to do this in the shower because they can soap up their hands and, and run their fingers across their skin a little bit quicker. We ask that you, uh, that you examine from your collarbone down to the top of your abdomen because your breast tissue actually starts a little bit higher than you could imagine. Mm -hmm. And the most common region for a breast cancer to originate is in the upper outer quadrant of the breast, so heading towards the armpit. We also recommend that a woman feel, it, feel her armpit as well because the glands or the lymph nodes from the breast drainage are, are located there. So we say to also take a look in the mirror a lot of times you can see a dimple or a change in the skin that maybe wasn't there previously. Changes are the big thing to detect when you do self-exam. Know what's normal for you and what's different. And I know a lot of gynecologists do it once a year for visits mm -hmm. or just your, your other types of doctors do it once a year. Would that be enough to, you know, from year to year to detect a change and, and catch it on time? Or does it need to be, I know you said every month, but does it need to be more common than that, do you think? We like women to be in touch with their bodies and to know when something's different. Having a provider do an exam once a year is definitely beneficial as well. About 70% of breast lumps that can be felt are first diagnosed by the woman herself. So that's why we want to empower women to know what their breasts feel like and if something has changed. And do you find that a lot come in concerned about it, but then it turns out to be nothing? There are those times, there are, but we always say any breast lump should be investigated. So if you have an area of concern or something that's changed, bring it forward to your doctor's or your provider's attention to know if, uh, if it's something to worry about or not. It seems like through the data that we've been looking at that breast cancer is pretty prevalent. It, I think it's the second leading cause of death among women. Why is breast cancer so prevalent? So we as women with every menstrual period have hormonal changes that act on the breast and when there's turnover and there's change, there's always a chance for something to go awry. And uh, we, it is the second most common cancer killer in women and the most common cancer diagnosis for women. Lung cancer is still the most common cause of cancer death for women. So it is very prevalent. And with 300,000 women being diagnosed this year, that's why we, we are so thankful for October to bring awareness forward to try to detect these cancers as early as possible. Absolutely, and it seems like there's a lot of foundations out there working to raise money and raise awareness for research and everything else. And what kind of technology have you noticed over your time as a doctor for breast cancer? How have things changed and developed to help save more lives? So the advent of screening mammography, which has been around much longer than I've been alive at this point, <laughs> has, uh, has really saved lives. About 30% reduction in mortality as a result of screening mammography, and that's oh. amazing. Our advent of additional technologies for screening whole breast ultrasounds and MRI are ever evolving as well, and now 3D MAMO is something to be excited about. Mm -hmm. There's been a lot of advance as well in chemotherapy and uh, radiation for breast cancer treatment as well. You're right, all of the research dollars and, and foundation uh, hard work that are going into breast cancer treatment is astounding. Mm -hmm. And we're so thankful for October for the month to, be, to really raise awareness and remind people that it's such a common diagnosis and something that we can all work together to treat. And I don't know if there's an answer to this, but over time, does it seem like it's, become more diagnosed? I mean, you know how people say, oh, back in my day, we didn't hear about that a lot. Is it something that's always been going on and people just died and didn't know what it was from? Or are there more cases of breast cancer now? So the incidence of breast cancer is increasing each year by about 1%. Uh, but we are detecting cancers earlier. So the number of cancers being diagnosed has increased. You're mm -hmm. right, over, over time we are diagnosing more women with breast cancer. And part of that is because we're looking more frequently. As women become more comfortable with mammogram and, and feel better about going further annual or biannual uh, mammo, they, uh, they were detecting more cancers. And are there perhaps any environmental factors that are known to have caused more breast cancer incidents? Mm -hmm. Or is it just the detection of it? Yeah, there are environmental factors as well, and a lot of those are under study, and it's, it's determining how those, uh, those play into the incidence of breast cancer. 
Uh, we, we know that smoking has definitely increased your risk and alcohol intake as well. And we were talking earlier, but I just want to make sure that people know for sure. We were talking about mammograms, but how often should they have them once they start when they're either 40 or 45 or 50? Right, and that's a complex question <laughs> often up for debate now as well. So every one or two years, Everyone and again, years. depending on risk factors, and also sometimes if we find something on a mammogram that's relatively nondescript, we may choose to image even more frequently at every six months just to maintain, to diagnose stability in that area of concern. If a woman gets to a certain age and they've never had any detection of any kind of precancer cells or anything else, is there a point in their life where they don't need a mammogram anymore? That's a great question and one we often talk about with our older patients. The, the short answer is that if you were diagnosed with a breast cancer at an older age and you would never decide to do anything about it, then mammography is probably not necessary any longer. What we do recommend is that if you, uh, if a woman, our studies pretty much stop at age 75, but if you know you have a good five years uh, left, <laughs> that, that continuing your screening would be beneficial. Okay, interesting. Very interesting conversation, informative. Thank you so much. We'll be right back after the break. You're watching 22 News in Focus. Watching 22 News in Focus, we've been discussing breast cancer, the prevention, detection, diagnosis, and treatment options. We hope you've learned something today, I know I have, that could make a difference in your own health or someone you love. And as part of October's Breast Cancer Awareness Month, 22 News has partnered with Cooley Dickinson Hospital to support the Go Pink campaign on Monday, October 24th, tomorrow. The Go Pink initiative was created to highlight the importance of early detection. We hope that you discuss this important issue with your family and friends and your doctor. Schedule an appointment to find out the risks and your best options for an early detection test. You can find more information about Go Pink and breast cancer testing and treatment on our website, wwlp.com. That's our program for today. We want to thank our guests for joining us today, and thanks to you at home for watching. If you missed any of it, remember you can watch it in full on our website at any time. Again, wwlp.com. From all of us here at 22 News, we wish you a wonderful Sunday.